Hi everyone, this is a tutorial to demonstrate how to work short row shaping um, into the neckband of a jumper. I'm going to be demonstrating this on my penultimate round of ribbing. So um, let's say I needed to work 10 rounds of ribbing in total. I've worked nine, then I'm going to work my short row shaping and then I'll work the final 10th round of ribbing. Um, now there's a couple of reasons why you may want to do this. One is I know that for some knitters who need a lot of short row shaping to get a really good fit on their circular yokes, um, I know that some of them don't like the look of a really large band of stockinette fabric at the back of their jumper. And so what they do instead is they halve the number of short rows um, that they need to do and put half into the neck band and then half into the stockinette um, se section that follows. The other reason you might want to do this is if you have a jumper that perhaps doesn't have as many short rows in it, or if any, um, and you want to add some, but the pattern that follows is going to be too complicated to add short rows into it. If that's the case, you can put the short rows into the neck band instead of into the, into the fabric that follows. Okay, so here I'm working, um, a one by one half twisted rib. So I'm working knit one through the back loop and then I'm working purl one. And I'm just gonna show you using this, how I put um, some short row shaping into the ribbing. Now this would work with any ribbing pattern. Um, it doesn't have to be this particular half twisted ribbing. It could be the regular knit one, purl one ribbing. It could be knit two, purl one, knit two, purl two. You get the idea. Um, what I do recommend though, is that you hide your short row turns in the purl stitches of your ribbing. So whatever your pattern is, you make sure that your short row turns land on your purl stitches because that hides those really nicely. Um, I wouldn't recommend putting the turns into the column of knit stitches because that will end up being quite obvious. Uh, okay, so what you will need to do is work the number of stitches in pattern. Um, here I'm going to put my turns into starting from approximately the back third of the neck band. So I'm going to knit the number of stitches that I need to knit and then making sure that I end on a purl stitch, not on a knit stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna purl this stitch and then I'm gonna turn to the wrong side. Here I'm using the German short row shaping technique, which is my personal preference when it comes to short rows. Okay, so I've turned to the wrong side and um, I'm going to now slip what looks like a knit stitch on the wrong side. It's the purl stitch on the right side. I'm gonna pull and bring my yarn round to the front to create that double stitch. Now I'm gonna be working my ribbing back in the opposite direction. Um, and you want to continue working in the same pattern, but remembering now that you're on the wrong side of your work. So for me, that pattern is now going to be a purl one through the back loop. Pull one through the back loop and knit one. So that's the reverse of knit one through the back loop, purl one. Um, and I'm now working on the wrong side. So pull one through the back loop, knit one. And I'm going to work back to the beginning of round. And then um, I'm going to continue working the same number of stitches in this opposite direction, except plus or minus one stitch. Now, the reason for that is because, again, I want to make sure that on this side, I'm also hiding my turns on the purl stitches that are on the right side. So I want to end on one of these knit stitches on the wrong side. Okay, so on the um, right side, I worked 16 stitches in pattern before working my first turn. I've now, I'm on the wrong side and I've worked 16 stitches past the beginning of round in the opposite direction, but that lands me on a purl one through the back loop, which is a knit one through the back loop on the right side. I don't want my short row turn on that column because it's going to really stand out and be very noticeable. So I'm going to work one extra stitch 
so that my short return can be hidden in one of those pearl bumps on the right side. It does mean that your short row shaping is unbalanced by one stitch, but um, that won't make any noticeable difference to the final um, fit of the garment. And I think in, on, in this case, prioritizing hiding those turns in the pearl bumps takes the priority. Okay, so I'm turning to the right side again, and um, I'm going to slip that stitch, pull on it to create the double stitch, and then I'm ready to carry on this time in my right side pattern, um, working my ribbing again back to the beginning of round marker. Then I will continue to work in the pattern until I reach that double stitch. I'll show you what to do when you reach that point. Okay, so I've worked in pattern until I've reached my first um, double stitch that I created um, on the right side. So all I'm going to do here is purl that double stitch together. And then I'm going to continue working a little bit further. I'm going to work about eight stitches um, more in pattern, and then I'm going to put in another turn. Okay, so then I'm going to work my next double stitch turn to the wrong side with my yarn in front, slip that stitch and then pull on it to tighten. And I'm going to work on the wrong side again. So you must remember to change the way you're working your ribbing so that it matches um, what you've worked on the right side. So I'm going to be working purl one through the back loop, knit one, all the way back to that double stitch that I created on the wrong side. And then I'll show you what to do with that. Okay, so when you reach your double stitch on the wrong side, you're going to knit the double stitch together uh, rather than purl it because you're working on the wrong side here. And then as you did for the right side, you're then going to continue working in pattern for a few, um, the same number of stitches, I did eight. Um, so you're going to work eight more stitches in pattern and then put in the next short row turn. And after that, you have the pattern for the short row shaping established and you can work as many short rows as you require to achieve the fit that you want to. Um, once you've completed all the short rows that you want to work, you'll work one final round of um, ribbing. And when you come to each of the double stitches, you just purl to the double stitch together. Uh, you do the same for both of those as you come to them. Okay, and that is how to work short row shaping um, in your ribbing and hide those double stitches in the purl bumps. Okay, I hope it helps.